Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome to our last six weeks already done for the action table. I want to first of all congratulate each and every one of us that have taken time to learn and grow. We know where we started in May. We started from the transformation table. And after we finished the transformation table, there was a need for us to move ahead because we are the people we want to change our world. And I just want to congratulate you as the facilitator of Change Your War by John C. Maxwell and One Hope. So I just want to thank you and I just want to congratulate you for just being here. You know, sometimes things that, uh, that are free or that are going to impact our life, we just look at it, oh, it's just nothing. But I know we all have testimonies or we all have one thing we have learned. Today is the sixth week. Really, 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 I'm going to miss all of you. And I'm also going to know that we are going to take what we have learned to, you know, to our world, to change our world. Anywhere, change can start from anywhere and where we are. So um, what we have learned so far, I want someone to share with us. Doris, can you please uh, share with us what you learned uh, so far, especially in the last lesson? Docas. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm here. So okay. Last week our topic was based on the working together to make a difference, and uh, okay for me what I learned is that uh, mostly referring to the video that we saw from John Maxwell is that uh, when people work together there's a warmth that it gives and uh, you know where there's warmth it means that everything is good and. Uh, especially when people coordinate and work together, there will be success, there will be values that are added, and there will be growth. Even in our normal life, we know that when people work together, they progress and they go far. And uh, the other thing is that where there's teamwork, people, like, uh, they are happy and they will grow together. Then uh, for that video also, they quoted that where there's no teamwork, where people they don't work together, it's cool. Okay, when you refer to cool, it means that okay, it's like there's no growth, there's no progress. Okay, basically for us, what we learn in this lesson is that there's importance of people working together in order to grow together, in order to uh advance in life, in order to uh achieve their goals that they have set. So always we have to work together in order to achieve all the set goals of life. Because what I believe is that everyone in this life has got his or her own goal that he has set. And for us being chosen, we should be able to attain certain goals in a positive way. And not only us, but we have to reach others and ensure that everyone grows. And you know, teamwork makes people go far. Okay, basing on the example that you gave to us, that if you want to go far, right? I know you can choose a group or a team so that you can go far. But if you want to go fast, you can go alone. But in this life, it needs people to work together to achieve certain objectives or maybe certain things that they have set in their life. So I just urge everyone to work as a team, to work together so that we may uplift each other, so that we may grow together, so that we may be happy together, so that we may receive everything that is good together. Because when all of us, we are uplifted, when all of us, we have achieved what is good, it will be happiness for all of us and everyone will outshine himself or herself. So that's all about our last week's lesson. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know a round of applause. So, Dockers, you are ready to start your own transformation table. You can go to changeyourworld.com, download it, gather a group of people. Remember, Change Your World is a group of four to six people. That's why when people ask me, can I join this? I said no, because I want to see. We have all grown. We started with eight, we came down to six, we are now back to six. We are all, all grown. So another opportunity. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I appreciate that. Donna, do you have anything to share with us before we jump into today's lesson? Yeah. Um, 
according to the cash, working as a team, Doris, uh, uh, at working as a team, uh, it, it brings uh, togetherness. And again, uh, it also creates uh, a vast experience for individuals. Unlike if you have a team, inside those teams, there are individual work. So if you are your, with your team, it will expose you also to have experience of what other people are doing. It will give you an insight of what other people are doing. So as everybody is working together in the team, it's in order to achieve one goal. So, and another thing is also to choose those who are you are supposed to work with. It's very important because you cannot choose the wrong tools for a right task. You always have to choose the right tools for the right task. So if somebody who is not going the same direction, who's not supposed to be in your team, it will bring an obstacle to the team. So on this note, if you choose the right people and uh, you are moving together, it will may enable you people to achieve things in a fast pace and also in on time. Wow, wow, absolutely amazing. Thank you, Donna. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think we should just give thumbs up for ourselves. The main thing is that I think we are all ready for transformation table. You can do it. If you want me to support you, I can always support you. Remember, this is free. We can do it. You can just start with even two to three, just don't make it more than 10 people and just gather people, just take the transformation table. You can do it, you can pass. That's how change starts. So on that note, we are going to start our last lesson. Wow, 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 wow. I can't believe it. I can't really believe it that we are in the last lesson of action table. Can you see how time flies when you're learning? So today, our lesson is on creating a meaningful scorecard. Creating a meaningful scorecard. We've seen we have started from transformation and table where we learned several values, six value actually we learned from our transformation table. You know, now we have moved to we learned of hope, we learned of listening. You know, Donna, what Donna shared with us during the listening of what he shared, you know, was really, really amazing. You know, we learned how to value every person integrity, we learned uh, forgiveness, and we learned multiplication. Then we move to the action table. Then now, you know, we have learned several things that we are just moving. So I'm so proud of you all. I'm very, very proud that what we have achieved so far as a team, as a people. So, so what is creating a scorecard? What is creating a scorecard? You know, what do we mean when we say uh, creating a, a meaningful scorecard? John Maxwell says something. He say, if a team is to accomplish its goal, it has to know where it stands. So just like us now, that's why I said, go back and take the, uh, check your pre-assessment that you took and take after the lesson, you have to take the post-assessment. So we it, it just like a student that want to study and you don't want to take exam, you have to check yourself. Even the Holy Book says, check yourself where you stand, you know, check yourself so that you don't fall and think you're standing. Even somebody that is uh, doing weightlifting or that is planning to lose weight, what happens? After a time, he has to go to the scale to check yourself. So after this massive six weeks of action table, I will encourage you to what to check yourself. You say a team that want to open. That's why in, we have team building. Yesterday I had the opportunity of attending uh, my departmental or my uh, unit team building. You know, so what was the team building? We came, we aligned because we have accomplished a small goal. So we want to know where we stand on the remaining work. So that was just so amazing for me. You know, it was awesome for me. So 
That is what John said. So today, as we continue to say, when you're working to make a difference or change your world, how do you know whether you are successful? How do you know? When people help others, they tend to judge their effectiveness based on how their effort make them feel. But feeling good isn't enough to change the world. You know, sometimes you might hear a story or you might watch a movie or it's a story that touches the heart. Uh, you know, after maybe you have an issue with someone, after you just finished talking to the person, the person feel remorse. All of a sudden, you know, especially kids, they forgot what you told them. But this is not making you feel good. This is going to impact, lasting impact that we're going to make. So if you want to know you're making a difference, you need to make measure your result. Where were you before we started the transformation table? Where were you after you took the pre-assessment for the transformation table and jump into the pre-assessment for the action table? So you have to take check yourself. Even me, after I finished, yeah, like we did in the transformation table, I said, okay, just tell me what is it, what you have, where well, let's know you and let's know where you are. Okay, so that is what we are learning. That is it. So in any other area of your life, people measure what is important to them. You know, in football, actually, of course, I love football. Uh, mostly, um, every almost every guy loves football. So if I tell you, okay, well, uh, no matter, I'll tell you a coach that I love so much. I always sometimes talk about him when I'm having my private session with the people I coach one-on-one -on -one because there are some people I coach one-on-one -on -one based on their career or marital, you know, uh, as per just coaching or professional. So I always tell them, result, sometimes result matters, but result is not everything. But I love Josie Moreno. He is all about result. You can hear that, oh, this person, he played so well. This team played so well. At the end of the day, they will ask you, what is the result? Right, they will ask. So, what then is the result? The result counts. You know, you can see. Ah, you can dribble hundred passes. Uh, I have hundred passes. I have this. Um, this. Then you will see the team one one zero. The thing that counts is the one zero. An actual scoreboard is used, especially in football. So, if you are playing in a football game, you know you will have to keep score, wouldn't you? How long do you think you uh, you would stay interested in the game if there was no goal to shoot at or no one keeping scores? Uh, just like when, even when we go for practice, maybe for some of us that did little football or you did some things, even when we go for practice, if they just score, score well, uh, just play around, there no scores, all of a sudden someone will get tired and the person we, is off. So when you visit a doctor, for example, or you go to hospital, they use this kind of scoreboard. They measure your height, your width, your temperature, just to know where you are, what is your health. They often sometimes take x-ray or blood sample to determine how healthy you are. This is when you want to take it. So um, based on that, if they can do that, they want to check. Even if you tell, oh, doctor, I'm sick. This is what we be. this. They will say, okay, let's check. Business people track their revenue and expenses. You know, sometimes we don't do budget. We don't track our expenses. But know that business people, they track their expenses, okay? And other data. So you take, that's why I love this scripture that says, write it down, write the vision down, make it plain that you will run with it because the vision is for an appointed time. The vision is for an appointed time. Donald, you want to say something? Your hand is up. Donald? With you, sir. Yeah, you. your hand is up. I thought you wanted yeah, to... Yeah, I wanted to... Because of what uh, the video you shared today, uh, talking about uh, Plan B, uh, is it uh, very okay to have a Plan B? Because I've been to a lecture where they, they tell you your plan B is always to make sure that the plan A work. So on this uh, note, I want to ask about. Okay. 
Thank you. I will answer that your question quickly. Uh, look at it this way. You have a car or I have a car. You're driving on a car. You have a spare tire. You're not expecting your tire to bust, but you have the spare tire just in case it busts. You can go from um, Doha to Accor. The tire will not bust. You're going. You can travel a distance, 100 kilometers. But you have that spare tire. That gives you an extra confidence. You understand? It doesn't mean that uh, because you have plan, uh, you have a spare tire, you're going to go and puncture your tire. No, but just in case you have, have you not been traveling, even a brand new car coming equipped has this spare tire. Take it from me that way. This is how I tell because several people, several books are there, several theories that are, people give people different theories. But just look at it and I look at you're not expecting the tire to bust. Your aim is not for your tire, your car tire to bust or to deflect. But you have a spare tire just in case. Or will you want to rather be in the middle of nowhere because you're driving a brand new car and something? Because something might be felt, you know, might happen and you change plan automatically. Just in case you run into something, deflection, brand new tire, we have seen, and it deflects. What happened? Because you have a spare one, you immediately change it, and you pull that one, and then you try to get to the next filling station or to the next place to fix it so that you have a spare tire. Then you continue based on your journey, based on your principle. So that is the best way I can answer you that question. That you have a plan B, does not mean you're not working on your plan A. Life happens. Can you imagine someone want to, okay, in 2020, so many of us didn't have a plan. So many of us didn't have, but some other people have plans. Like people have been saying recession is coming and all, all those things, but people don't think about it. But several people have a plan. Just like I'm working, I'm not uh, about to resign or leave my job now. But there are things as a family you're putting in place to read, right? So that is the same way I want us to look at it this way. Your plan A is there, but just life happens, things happen. You must have a concrete plan, it's easy. So it doesn't happen to you on our things doesn't happen to you on our, you begin to scratch your hair or something, okay? That is the best way yeah. to answer. Okay, I yeah. hope I've answered this correctly for you. Yeah, uh, yeah. anyway, uh, let me not uh, continue. Okay. Then after we can okay so uh, even business people it. track their expenses and revenue as well as other data you know we're talking about what are we talking about talking about creating a meaningful scorecard so you have to keep it you know otherwise they might run out of money and go out of business uh, okay it's still on that plan a plan b just like you know there is used to be a mechanic guy uh, he was very good with Volkswagen. But as things we are involving, things new cars we are coming, he didn't go to learn other cars. By the time he know it, he has already gone back to his village. Why? Because he didn't change himself. He didn't involve with the system. So individual track their personal expenses. I do that myself. And I know you do that. Otherwise, it will, be, it will not be good on our part. You know, so if you have a bank account, don't you keep an eye on the money that comes in and goes out? Because nobody will tell me, okay, you have a money and you go to ATM and you withdraw and they take your money and you don't know. You will, you will immediately, once they just remove 500 where you will immediately call the bank. What happened? What service charge? Why did my money? No. Yeah, because while well, you're keeping a track record of your money, because we all work for it. Don't you keep a budget to make sure you don't run out of money? You know, this is due. You, you can say, okay, I'm any so, 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 maybe $500, $100 is for accommodation, $100 is for savings, um, $10 is for my tithe, because I call it 50 period tithe, $10 is my tithe. Uh, yeah, at, uh, $50 is my tie because it's the, what's it called, $500, okay. Um, this one, $50 is for upkeep, 
uh, fifty dollar is for grocery grocery. You know, so you keep it that, and maybe you have you say um ten dollars so is to help people back home from where you are coming. You need to plan according. That's how I do budget. If you want to learn more about budgeting, you can contact me. I will show you a scorecard that I use for budgeting. So why are you doing that? So that at the end of the day, you don't give a, if you're staying uh, where we are staying, we give post-data check. If you're staying, the landlord wouldn't go to bank and put in the money, uh, uh, put in the check and it bounce. And we know what happens when check bounces in this part of the world where we live. What happens automatically is an offense. So what's the scorecard when it comes to transformation? Now we'll bring it down. What is this scorecard? When it comes to transformation, how do you know you are making a difference or changing your world? You measure change. Really, we have to measure change. I'll tell you, we really have to measure how we change our world, okay? We have to measure you know, what we are doing, where we are. Are we really changing our world? Are we really affecting people? Change is more important than how good you feel about your effort. Like sometimes, I tell you, you know, you say transformation table group of six to um, six to eight people, not more than that. And you just come to class sometimes, you know, you just have uh, one person or two people who the previously. So you are not discouraged because it's not how you feel. You know, the impact that the seed you must have sown in one person or the impact you must have made in one person might be a repelling effect and affect other people. It's more important and more reliable scorecard that motivates or intentions. Did you get that? I said, it is more important and more reliable scorecard you motivate or intentions. You shouldn't assume that you're making a difference unless you can measure that positive change is occurring. Right now, I can tell you, I know, that we are making a difference. You know, for someone to say, oh, Dockers to say, is class not happening today? That's a difference because she has learned for Donna to share. Donna, I can never forget that lesson on listening. What he shared was absolutely amazing. You know, for Gloria to be here, said, oh, can she join? I know that we are all making a difference. We are changing lives. You know, Dorman always said, you know, he is not, telling a story, he is changing life. So it does not matter if it's one person or five or eight that comes. It's not about my feeling as a facilitator. I'm only a facilitator, but it's about what we are doing. So I'm like, yes, I am measuring it. I, I see people, when I hear some of you talk that we have led this table together, I know that we are changing life. So it is, is the only way to verify what works and what doesn't work. You cannot just be building a house and just think that it's not working or something. You have to measure it, measure, measure. We need to, if you know, you remember what is smart, you know, it has to be systematic, measurable, you know, accurate, time bound, okay? So reliable, it has to be, R is for reliable and it has to be time bound, okay? So John Maxwell Leadership Foundation uses four steps, progress to create a major positive. You can use it no matter how you are working to make the difference. So I'm going to share my screen at it is. So we're going to take one by one and we are going to see um, how to make the difference. Okay, so can you see the screen? Yes, I can see. Okay, good. Absolutely amazing. So now from my screen, there we are. I don't add your first on my screen, then Dockers, then Gloria. That's how we're going to take it today. So uh, Donald, you're going to read uh, Discover uh, the four one, um, Doc, as you read, design the first paragraph, um, is long, just the first one. Then, uh, Gloria will read, uh, uh, deploy. Then I will read document. So, uh, so I will read document. Okay. That's how we're going to read it. So remember, as is our tradition, 
once you're reading or once anyone is reading, remember you have to write down what stuck out to you, what is important, what you're getting so that we can share it. Take one minute at the end of after I really we go back to read on the line and share it. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, can you, okay. Uh, can I read now? Yes, go ahead, Donna, your turn. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, I want to, the process start with the discovering of truth. Takes a hard look at the problem you want to solve or uh, the people you want to help. What can you learn about them? What are the cause of the problem? Do research as expert. Talk to people experiencing the problem. Try to understand it as deep as you can so that you can def uh, define it clearly. Discovering the truth can be challenging and sometimes it can be discouraging. But the first step is to is marking anything better is to con confront it, confronting reality. When we argue with reality, we lost hundred percent of the time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Donna. That was awesome. Awesome. So, Dakas, you have to read. Yeah. The second one, we have design. Yeah. Uh, once you have defined the problem, describe how you intend to address it. Uh, what does victory look like? Describe the final goal. That prepares you to design a plan for solving it. Stephen R. Covey called this, beginning with the end in mind, only, the, only then can you begin developing a strategy to achieve victory. In the book, Change Your World, John Maxwell and Rob Hoskins recommend the following plan for creating positive change. First one, describe the reality of the situation when you are based on the discovery process. Second one, Identify your target, where you want to be when you have completed your plan. Define what a win looks like. The third one, to the best of your ability, identify all the steps that will be needed to get from your current reality to your target. The fourth one, identify the people, partners, and resources needed to accomplish those steps. The fifth one, Give yourself an aggressive yet realistic timeline for the completion of your plan with checkpoints along the way. Thank you so much. And the last uh, sentence we say, be as though as you can, but don't take too much time. Change cannot encore until you go to the next step. Just like when we started with our uh, transformation table, then we move to action table. You can see there is a really difference from those two lessons uh, we are improving. So, Gloria, are you ready to read now? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Number three. Once you have deployed your plan and taken action, it is to look, it is to look at the the scored the scorecard. You must measure results to make sure that your intended outcomes are being accomplished. Completed. Ask how many people did did how many no, people did you, our no you are reading number three design deploy. Oh okay, sorry. Once you have created a plan of action, it is time to deploy and see how how well it produces the outcomes you desire of changing your world. As Walt Disney said, the way you get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Begin to implement, implement some of the things you have discovered and designed, but start small. That makes, that makes it easier for you 
for you to track your progress toward your goal and don't worry about failing. If something is not working, you can change what you are doing and learn as you go. Thank you so much, Gloria. Yeah, that was I'm, awesome. I'm using the phone. That's why you hear me stammering because I am <laughs> okay. not using my iPad, yes. No problem. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Number four. I read number four. He said, once you have deployed your plan and take action, it's time to look at the scorecard. You must measure results to make sure that your intended outcome are being accomplished. Ask, how many people did our action impact? How did those people change? What specific differences did the change make? Why did the change occur? Did the change create progress that gets us nearer to accomplishing the ultimate goal? Your answer to this question will help you understand how close you are to hitting your target and where you fall short. Analyze the information, learn from it. John Delaware said, we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. Sometimes we say experience are the best teacher, but I can also learn by someone experienced, just like when I read book from someone that has already been in the lesson for 30 years. So that is it. So I reflect on his change. Anyone can identify a need, create a plan and use a meaningful scorecard to measure the results. Keep doing that and ultimately you will make a difference. I believe that you will make a difference. So on that note, we come to the, uh, reflect and respond. They choose what you have underlined, what that is important to you. Take a minute and tell everyone what you chose and why you chose it. So I already chosen my wife, someone was reading or while I was reading. So um, like is our tradition as the facilitator, I'm going to go first again, then uh, Donna, Dockers, and Gloria. Um, so let's just give a one minute, then we can just take it up. Is it okay? If you want me to scroll, uh, just I'm just scrolling to see from discover to design to deploy to document. If you have anything, just remember the four Ds. These are four Ds. Okay. So one minute is 624 so 625 i just if there is anywhere you want me to scroll or to stop you can let me know okay um as if i let i go for so my one minute, what I've on that line is when uh, I think it was Gloria that was reading, you know, uh, in three, he said deploy. As Disney, Walt Disney said, we all know who is what Disney. He said, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. That caught my attention so much because sometimes as individual, uh, you know, if there is a quote I saw somewhere, he said, if you wait for all the light to be green, you will never make this step. So it does not, my coach, um, uh, Paul Martinelli, he said, jump, just jump. And the wings, you grow your wings while you're jumping, you stumble, you fall. He said, being implement some of the things you have discovered and designed, but start small. Just like I've started, uh, we have started, you know, we started, but, you know, several times say, can I do it? We, people, we be committed, you know, but then, you know, I quit, quit uh, thinking it and we started, especially for the action table, because this is my first time to take action table. I've uh, taken a transformation table, but each time after people commit for six weeks, after transformation table, they just, oh, uh, again, but I know we have all like so uh, that is my own. He said the way to get started for anything I want to get do is to quit talking about it and begin to do it. You know, uh, as I do it, and I don't worry about failing. 
if it doesn't work or if it isn't working, I change what I'm doing and learn as I go. So that caught my attention. So Donald, you're next to go. Yeah, uh, according to the one I read, that is discovery. Um, it takes a heart of lion to discover the truth, like the content says. Uh, you know, sometimes people can be diplomatic. Sometimes people will be econ economical with the truth. So he said we should discover the truth. So with that discovering the truth, it will give you the right step. You know, I believe if someone is building on a falsehood, uh, those things are not going to last. No matter how fancy, how beautiful, how solid, but it is based on a falsehood, uh, I don't think it's going to. So like he said, uh, the, we should check deeply. It, it takes a hard look at a problem you want to solve. Taking a hard look means digging deep to know the truth. If like you are settling a, a, a dispute between two people and the one is saying the truth while the other one is economical with the truth, it takes a long time for you to get uh, on like what we call the root cause. If we the root cause of the problem. So when you get to the root cause, it will enable you to deploy the right machinery, the right tools to start solving the problem. Otherwise, if you are giving uh, the wrong note at the first time and you start solving that one and forgetting the root cause of the problem, uh, I think we are not going to, we are going to have a very uh, big challenge at the end. But if we get the truth, then it will help us to analyze, okay, how deep this situation or this problem has caused. And at the end of it, we, we have the right channel to confront the reality. So once we confront the reality, the reality gives way for us to move ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely amazing. That was awesome. Okay, Dorcas, which one are we going for? Design, discovery, deploy, or document? I think for me, <laughs> I had chosen the first one as well. Okay. Part. I don't know whether it's good to repeat the same thing. Yes, or... it's good. No. Yes, so why not? No, you have a different opinion. So you say your own. <laughs> yeah. I say my own. Yeah, yeah you can say own. the same thing. Yeah, it's oh good. God. Okay, there was discovered that one is. Can I? Can you no, scroll no. down? No, no. Dockers, I encourage you to say your first, what you chose. That is why we are here. You know, we have to say at it, what you feel that catches is not because. Yeah. Someone. So I encourage you to say it. Please say it. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Actually, definitely. This one. Okay. For me, I know that. Okay. Whenever you want like to solve a problem, or maybe whenever that you want to do something, you have to discover deeply. You cannot just jump into something and uh, or you start judging or start doing this. First of all, you have to know, okay, I want to do this. This is what I want to work on to improve this. Or maybe this is what I want to do to certain group of people. First of all, you have to research this thing. You have to know more about this thing. Dig up, do your research. Understand what you are going to imply to these people. Because you will not just go there and be like, okay, Today we are going to do this. We are going to learn about forgiveness. Okay, first of all, you have to know what is forgiveness. You have to know some of the examples related with forgiveness. I'm just giving an example. So when you discover, it will make you even, it will make it more easy to even um, like uh, teach other people. It will even make it easy for people to know really what you are teaching them. So 
Okay, for me, I know that uh, I chose this one, Discover, because, you know, whatever that you want to solve in this world, whatever that you want to do, first of all, you have to know what you want to do. You have to set your goals. Same case, we got to say the smart thing, it works well. Okay, what you want to achieve, whatever that you do should be measurable. You should be specific to your point. So you will not just pop in and be like, oh, this is what you want to do like that. No, 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 no. Set your goals, research, know what you want to do. Then from there, you will know even how to imply it to others. And it will make it easy. It will even make people to grab the content. It will make people understand. It will make it to be easy for people to know, okay, this is how it is. These are the precautions. This is the way. Yeah. So for me, I go with that one, discover. I think I've explained it for you. Very well. Thank you so much. That was awesome. You see what you would have denied us from knowing this evening. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Um. Gloria, you are next. Which one are we picking? Are we going for discovery or design or which one document or deploy? Glory? Gloria, are you there? Okay. I think she maybe she left or maybe she's not hearing me. Okay, so now this one I'm going to leave you with it because we already as I said I will wanna walk. Um, you know, it says take five minutes to think about it and respond the following question. Write your answer and share with the group. So you write your answer, you share it. Where do you see a need for transformation in your world? How can you be a part of that solution? I'll tell you what I, I saw a need when they said there was a volunteer. That was in 2018 or 2016 or so. Just, uh, I can't remember about, between 2016 or 20, yeah, 2016 and 2018, you know, I was just working in Laguna Mall and that was when Qatar just won, won the, that, that was when Qatar just won the cup and, you know, I won the hosting, not the cup, won the hosting to for the FIFA. And I just went, to, I did a one minute advert for QMB. And I just said, you know, they just brought people on Qatar National Day on the 18th of December. I'll never forget that day. And immediately I finished, immediately I finished that, you know, it stuck my attention, it stuck my mind. It stuck my mind, you know, to say, what can I do for Qatar? How can I be involved in this transformation? on this World Cup. And I jump in, and from that 2018, I volunteer, I become volunteer leader, and I moved, and uh, as of uh, this week, I've received to be part of uh, the volunteer again, I'll be selected, I'll be selected, I've done my interview and everything. So that is how I am becoming, that is how I became part of the solution to help to make this 2022 FIFA World Cup the most amazing World Cup ever ever that's how i want to transform my world so i've shared with you if you want to share you can share uh, otherwise we will call it a day and we will celebrate and and i want to congratulate each and every one of you for having been a part of this action table now is your time as your as, as the facilitator is our time to go and do what and impart our world and change our world for the lesson that we have learned, for everything that we have learned so far in these last six weeks. Please don't lose it, okay? It's been an awesome time. And I want to congratulate you. I want to congratulate each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart as a facilitator, helping to change our world. And I know you're going to change your world. Okay, thank you. We just have Maggie coming and uh, we have a word or anybody have a last minute word before I stop sharing. Anybody have a word before we yeah, take? Uh, anybody who comes last to yeah. bring uh, yeah, no, 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 Hello, you said? Donald. Anybody who comes last, we bring item seven. 
Okay. Yeah, we can do a virtual. Have you have you any? We can do a virtual party too. Thank you. Maggie, you wanted to say something. Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening. Welcome back. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, welcome. Uh, sorry, guys, I was in another meeting.